Hello everyone, we are here with another question from the year 2022 physics optional paper 1. So in this question, we are given the two particles, particle P and Q with different masses M1 and M2. So we have two particles P and Q. So a particle P is of mass M1 collides with another particle Q with mass M2 at rest. So it is at rest. So it is moving. So let's say the initial velocity for particle P be small u. The particles P and Q travel at the angles theta and phi respectively with respect to the initial direction. So let's draw the situation. So we are having a particle P. It is moving in this direction, let's say, with a velocity u and this particle Q at rest. So after the collision with Q, the particle P and Q moves in some different directions. After directions is making an angle of theta and phi. This is P and this is Q. So this is a situation. So we have to derive the expression for maximum value of theta. So let's start. So this question belongs to 2D collision. So we are having a particle P which is moving in this direction. Here is a particle Q at rest. So the mass of P is M1 and the mass of Q is M2. So after collision, the particles move in these directions. Let's say P is making an angle of theta with its initial direction and the Q is moving in the direction making an angle of phi with the initial direction of P. So this is our whole situation. Let's say the velocity after collision of P be V1 and Q be V2. So we have to make the components X and Y components. So we can draw here. So this is our direction. This is theta. So this will be V1 sine theta and this is V1 cos theta. Similarly, we are the Q particle. So this is the velocity V2 of Q. So its two components will be V2 cos phi because it is making an angle of phi. And this is V2 sin phi. So we are not given any elastic or inelastic. So we will assume that this case is elastic. So let's write the equations using the conservation of momentum first using conservation of momentum we can write for x component first before collision it is m1 u that is the velocity of particle P that is in the x direction and this is m2 it is at rest so this is 0 and which is equal to after collision we have to write the horizontal component so we have to write the cos components of both the particles so it's m1 v1 cos theta and then it is in the same direction so it is a positive sign then it is m2 v2 cos phi so this is our we can write this to the next step so we finally get this first equation so this is our equation number one similarly we have to write for the y component so this will be before collision the y component is 0 for both the particles and after collision because there is a vertical component in opposite direction so we can write this m1 v1 sin theta 
and this is a negative direction because both are in opposite direction so m2 v2 sin phi this is equation number 2 so now using the conservation of energy we can write the two equations so for x component before collision it's half m1 u square plus 0 because q is at rest and this is half m1 v1 square cos square theta plus half m2 v2 cos square phi so this is our x component so y component will be 0 before collision and this is half m1 v1 square sine square theta and plus half m2 v2 square sine square phi so this is our equation number three this is our equation number four first we have to slightly rearrange these two equations so let's write it here half m1 u square is equal to half m1 v1 square cos square theta plus half m2 v2 cos square phi so we have to eliminate the phi part because we have to find the maximum value for theta so let's take the theta term here you will see how we are going to eliminate this phi so we can cancel this half whole throughout and this is our equation we will be using in a bit So this is our equation number 5. Rearrange the fourth. So this is half m1 v1 square sine square theta is equal to minus half m2 v2 sine square phi. So this half will cancel out. This m1 v1 square sine square theta is equal to minus m2 v2 square sine square phi. So this is our equation number 6. We have to subtract 5 minus 6. So m1 u square minus m1 v1 square cos square theta. This is m2 v2 cos square phi. And this is m1 v1 square sine square theta. This is minus m2 v2 sine square phi. We just have to subtract this. So we get m1 u square minus m1 v1 square cos square theta minus m1 v1 square sine square theta. So on the other side this is m2 v2 square cos square phi and this is minus minus plus so m2 v2 square sine square phi. So we can take this m1 v1 square common and this cos square theta plus sine square theta. We can write this as 1. So I will write this as m1 v1 square. So on the right hand side this will we will use the same thing and we are left with m2 v2 square so this is m1 u square minus v1 square is equal to m2 v2 square so v2 square can be written as m1 over m2 this is u square minus v1 square let's say this is equation number seven so now using the 
equation 1 and 2 let's write it here this is m1 u which is equal to m1 v1 cos theta plus m2 v2 cos phi slightly rearranging this m1 u minus m1 v1 cos theta which is equal to m2 v2 cos phi and the second equation is m1 v1 sine theta is equal to m2 v2 sine phi this is equation number two first we have to individually square these two equations and then add so let's square it m1 square u square this is plus m1 square v1 square cos square theta and this will be minus 2 m1 square u v1 cos theta this is when we square whole square this part we will get this a square plus b square minus 2ab so we are doing this thing similarly this is m square v square cos square phi this is the square of first equation and then the square of second equation will be m1 square v1 square sin square theta and this is m2 square v2 square sin square phi so let's add this two so after adding we will get m1 square u square m1 square v1 square cos square theta plus m1 square v1 square sin square theta and this is minus 2 m square u v1 cos theta and on the right hand side we will get m2 square v square cos square phi plus m2 v2 square sin square phi we will be using the same property taking the m2 square v2 square common and cos square phi plus sin square phi will be equal to 1 so we will get so after solving this we get this equation and this is our equation number 8 so let's write again this equation number 7 this is v square v2 square which is equal to m1 over m2 this is u square minus v1 square this is our equation number 7 these are the two equations so let's substitute v2 square using 7 in 8 so our equation 8 will become m1 square u square plus m1 square v1 square minus 2 m1 square u v1 cos theta and this is m2 square and this v2 square can be replaced by m1 m2 u square v1 square so let's open the brackets so we will get m1 m2 u square minus v1 square so this is m1 square u square plus v1 square minus 2 u v1 cos theta so this m1 will cancel out this so we are left with m1 u square plus v1 square minus 2 u v1 cos theta this is m2 u square minus v1 square so simplifying it and so let's write the quadratic equation of v1 square so this is v1 square this is 1 and when this v1 square comes out this will be plus m2 over n1 and then this is minus 2u v1 cos theta and then this u square term which will be equal to u square common this is 1 minus m2 over n1 which is equal to 0 this is our quadratic equation 
so for the real solution this b square minus 4 ac should be more than or equal to 0 for real solution so let's find out this determinant so our b is minus 2u cos theta and a is 1 plus m2 over n1 and our c is u square 1 minus m2 over m1 so let's put the bac value this will become 4 u square cos square theta minus 4 a is 1 plus m2 over m1 u square 1 minus m2 over m1 this is more than or equal to 0 so we can take out this 4 u square and we are left with cos square theta minus 1 minus m2 over m1 whole square which is more than or equal to 0 so this is not 0 so this cos square theta minus 1 minus minus plus m2 square over m1 square that should be more than this is minus sin square theta because 1 minus cos square theta is equal to sin square theta we know this property so replacing this with minus sin square theta plus m2 over m1 whole square so our equation becomes sin square theta is less than or equal to m2 over m1 so the sine theta is less than or equal to m2 over m1 so this is a possible solution so we get this condition of sine theta should be less than m2 over m1 so in order to find the maximum theta value we will be using the equality sign to find the maximum so our theta max is equal to sine inverse of m2 over m1 so this is our expression for maximum value of theta so this is a solution for this question if you have any doubts related to this topic write me in the comment box and if you find this video helpful Please like, share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching this video.